Welcome to the cost of capital. This is a more theoretical overview, an introduction of what cost of capital is all about, and then a calculation of cost of capital without tax and then with tax. So let's say you want to start a business and you need $400,000. You manage to convince bank, uh, some bank to lend you $100,000. Of course, it's not free, so they're going to charge you 5%. The rest you can get from um, investors and their equity holders. They're going to invest uh, $300,000 with you, and you manage to convince them, given the risk of the project and the possible returns, that they can they'll they'll expect a return of 10 percent so that total amount you can now invest in your assets and your balance sheet quite simplified is 400,000 in assets and 400,000 in capital which is liabilities debt plus equity now what return do you need in order to pay your capital well you need to pay the five percent on your debt that's five thousand dollars five percent of a hundred thousand and for your equity, you need to pay 10% of the $300,000 or $30,000. So your total payment in capital, debt and equity, has to be $35,000, just these two added together. So debt will receive five and equity will receive $30,000. So let's take an example which, in which your company earns just exactly the amount necessary to satisfy your, um, those who give you capital. So here we have sales, variable costs, fixed costs, depreciation. We end up with an EBIT of $35,000. Now, off of that, we pay interest $5,000, which is what we need to do uh, for the $100,000 that we borrowed. And note, we, there are no taxes, so our earnings before tax, that's EBT here, is $30,000, and there's no tax off of it. So that $30,000 becomes the net income which is then enough to satisfy our equity that needs $30,000 return. So as you can see, the EBIT was sufficient to pay our capital. So that's the required return then on the $400,000 we had to invest is $35,000 over $400,000 or 8.75%. That's the return we need to make in order to uh, pay $35,000 to our uh, capital. And that effectively then becomes our hurdle rate uh, for our project. So again, just to recall, how did we calculate it? Calculate it, it was the amount of equity times the return and the amount of debt times the return. As we can see with the numbers here, it turned out to be 35,000 over the total, which was 400,000. Now, Rearranging the terms, you can, you can then divide each of these two terms, the ERE and the DRD. We can divide it by the total amount of equity plus debt, and then we get these two expressions here. Those fractions are simply the proportions of equity and debt, because it's equity over the total amount of equity, debt over the total amount of, sorry, equity plus debt. So in our example, we have E over E plus D is 300,000 over 300,000 plus 100,000. So that's three quarters. And here the debt is one quarter. So we have three quarters equity, one quarter debt. So therefore, our weighted average cost of capital, we can look at the proportions here. We can say it's 75% times 10%, which is the cost of equity, plus the 0.25 or 25% times the 5% cost of debt. That gives us also the same answer, obviously, 8.75. So let's take an example now with tax. So far we've done it without tax. Now let's again come up with an income statement which, where the debt receives 5,000 and equity receives 30,000. So here's an example of that. We have our sales, variable costs, et cetera, et cetera. Now we'll see that the earnings before interest and tax has to be 42,500. We knock 5,000 off for debt. That leaves us with earnings before tax of 37,005. We pay 20% tax, leaving us with 30,000, which is what our equity investors need. So here our EBIT is 42,500. Try the same thing again and with a tax rate of 40%. Now we'll see 
same thing, sales, costs. And then we have EBIT, now it's 55,000. We knock off 5,000 for the interest payment, that leaves us with 50,000. We pay taxes of 40% on that, leaving us with 30,000 again to pay our equity. So now in both, in all cases, capital givers have given us, have received 30,000 plus 5,000, 35,000. But as you can see, the, the numbers have changed around from the before tax EBIT. So it's clear that the EBIT due to tax is different for each of those scenarios. In finance, though, we want to separate the cash flow generation, in other words, the asset side of the business and how, much we, how we measure its cash flow from the financing side of the business. So that's a decision on the liability side, how much debt we, we put into the company. So what's the debt and equity balance? So from the cash side, although this is not a full val calculation of cash flow, that's for some other uh, later, uh, later analysis, but we use EBIT times one minus tax. That's the, method, that's the basis that we use. So this separates the choice of the amount of debt in the determining the cash flows because this is all before we've paid our capital, our debt capital. So tax is considered in the cost of capital now. So debt is paid pre-tax, equity is post-tax. So we have to see how that's going to work. If we look at the EBIT times one minus tax for the three scenarios we had, the no tax scenario, it was 35,000. And with the T is 20% tax, we had EBIT times one minus T, we had an EBIT of 42,000. We subtract one minus, we multiply one minus tax. We have 34,000 for that scenario. And when tax is 40%, we have EBIT times one minus tax is 33,000. So why is that? Again, the reason is the after-tax return to equity is, is the same, 30,000. However, the after-tax return to debt changes. In all cases, the before-tax, the pre-tax payment is 5,000, but after-tax, it changes. When T is zero, so tax rate is zero, the tax, the amount we pay is 5,000. When T is 20%, then the after-tax amount we're paying debt effectively is 4,000. When T is 40%, then the after-tax amount we're paying is 3,000. So EBIT times one minus tax becomes 30,000 here, plus these various numbers based on the tax levels. So EBIT is 35,000 for tax-free, 34,000 for T minus a tax rate of 20%, and 33,000 for 40%. So here, this will give us the cost of capital. Now what we have to do is we, we have to, we can keep the equity side equal and the same, but the debt side now has changed because we have to consider the one minus tax from an after tax point of view. So the required return or the weighted average cost of capital then includes this term. And again, breaking it up into uh, their fractions here you're going to end up with the weight of equity times the return on equity plus the weight of debt times the return on debt times one minus T, the tax rate. If we include preferred shares as well, then we will tack on the weight of preferred shares times the rate of preferred shares. Now, of course, the weight of equity plus the weight of debt plus the weight of preferred shares are going to add up to one. So, of course, these weights would, would, uh, would be different if we also have preferred shares in the mix. So let's take a look at the previous numbers and tax rate of 20%. The equity is 300, the debt is 100, the equity return is 10%, the debt return is 5%. So here, weight of equity, three quarters, weight of debt, one quarter. And then we'd have a whack of three quarters times 10 plus one quarter times five times 0.8 and that gives us a weighted average cost of capital of 8.5%. Now, to give you an idea again, how do we do it overall as a method? We want to calculate the total amount of equity. Normally, if we don't have it already, we would have the share price times the number of shares. That's the total value of all of the equity of the company. In the case of debt, to calculate the total amount of debt, you would have the bond price, you multiply it by the number of bonds or the total market value of bonds if you're given that. Uh, for the preferred shares, like in the case of equity, you'd have the price times the number of shares. 
Then you have the total volume of E here, E plus V plus preferred shares, and then you can calculate the weights, which are simply these put together. That gives us the weights of equity, debt, and preferred shares. Now the rates, to calculate the cost of equity, there are two methods. You can use either the dividend growth method or the capital asset pricing model. You may use both if you're given them. That gives us the requ required return on equity. In the case of debt, you would uh, normally be given the information on the bonds and you solve it. The, for the yield given the present value payment number of periods and the future value. And for preferred shares, knowing that preferred shares of, are of course a perpetuity, it's simply cal calculated by, cal by dividing the dividend by the price of the preferred share. That gives us all of these required returns. Together we have to add consider the tax rate and then we use the weighted average cost of capital equation and you have these weights here multiplied by these rates. And in the case of debt, you have one minus tax. And that's 